So before we get started on today's video, I'm going to show you something. This graphic shows that only 1.2% of the people who watch my channel are subscribed. That means that 98.8% of you out there who are watching are not subscribed. 98.8% of you, only 1.2% of the people who watch are subscribed. So I want to make a challenge to you. You guys who are subscribed, if you know somebody who watches and is not subscribed, help them out. Maybe they don't know how. Give them a hand. Show them how to subscribe. Those of you who watch and are not and don't intend to subscribe, Bleep bloop down in the messages down on the underneath. Just let me know why. I'd like to know why. If it's something I'm doing wrong on my channel, I'll fix it. Just let me know. The rest of you out there, hit that subscribe button. It's easy. What's it going to hurt? Just hit the button and subscribe. And to those of you who are subscribed, Thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. I really appreciate it. It helps me out. All right, guys. Thanks for hearing me out. Let's get to today's video. Hey, y'all. Welcome back to the Project DIY channel. Today, we're going to work on the boat some more. Let's get started. Before I can do anything, I've got to take care of this pond that's developed in the middle of my cover. I've got to find some kind of prop or something to put up and under that cover to keep it from doing that. So let's get that pumped out. Away she goes. So we're cleaning the inside out. Gonna pressure wash. Dawn and a pressure washer makes anything look better. All right, let's get this thing back in down. Found one of the issues with the reason why the boat's overheating. The freeze plug on this side has popped out. So there's no cooling water going through the engine circulating. So that's one of the issues. Uh, apparently that usually happens if it's been stored during the winter time with water in the block and wasn't flushed out and antifreeze put in it. So it was, that's probably what happened there. 
Then the other issue is this hole right here. So this hole is on the output side of the impeller. The impeller pulls water in through these holes in the sides, pumps it up, pumps it through here into the engine compartment, and the water pump on the engine uh, circulates it through through there, and then it comes back out out here somewhere. That plug not being there, uh, I noticed this on an earlier video that I did. The impeller is just pumping water up and right back out that hole instead of up to the engine. So that's one reason why we're overheating. And that plug on a an OMC Cobra outdrive is called the do not remove plug for obvious reasons it has a washer in the back and a bolt uh, or actually the plug is a screw and it screws into the washer and it pinches itself and sinks the head down in that hole and that's how it seals it off it's there's an o-ring supposed to be in there so anybody who takes that plug out the washer falls off, falls down inside the drive, and you can't get the plug back in. So it's called the do not remove plug. And in fact, when OMC built these, there was a sticker over that that uh, covered that up so nobody would remove it. Of course, stickers end up falling off, and you know the rest of the story. So that plug has been removed on this one, and that's causing an overheating issue. So two issues I gotta fix before uh, we move on is plugging this hole and putting the freeze plug back in. And what I think I'm going to do on this hole here is I'm going to find a washer that will fit down inside of there and maybe an o-ring, uh, a washer that will just sit on this lip inside of this hole and then scuff it up real good with some sandpaper and fill it in with JB weld. We'll see how that holds. The freeze plug on the other hand is a whole different story. Right down there is the motor mount. And that freeze plug is directly behind that motor mount. So the only way to get that freeze plug back in is to take the motor mount off, prop the engine up so it can't fall take that motor mount completely off off the engine and off of the floor down there get it out of the way and put that freeze plug back in and then you hammer it back in with a rubber mallet or something but that it is directly behind that motor mount so that's going to be an issue that's going to be hard to do but we'll get her done so we got everything kind of sort of vacuumed up and looking a little better probably here smoking hot wife is over there using the pressure washer on some of the seats cleaning those up I think the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna scrub this thing down real good uh, all of the white make all the white look white again and not dirty and black like this does and the seats and then we're gonna bring a pressure washer in here and pressure wash everything down real good. One of the issues I'm gonna to have to deal with probably when we redo the whole thing is this dash. I think I can paint that pretty easy and make it look okay. But these buttons down here, on the other hand, all the writing is going off of them. I have no idea what they are should be a fan and a bilge pump and lights and some other stuff there's one over here also all this writing is gone so I can't read what any of those are supposed to be so I probably will take this out and uh, I don't know I might be able to use it or I might be able to make a new one not really sure what I'm gonna do but I'll make a better looking one. You can get decent switch panels on Amazon that look pretty cool. So that might work. Or maybe just replace the buttons 
the actual switches themselves with ones that have the symbol on them for what they are your bilge fan bilge pump lights etc horn that's another thing too the horn doesn't work so we got to take care of that it just makes a noise it makes a clicking noise the other side's not in much better shape there's no radio in it and uh, this piece is falling apart so probably take all that out and put something different in there I'm gonna put a radio in it also the glove box is no longer attached to the hinge so it's had some screw holes put in it that's gonna have to be taken care of These compartments over here, the bottoms have fallen out of them and they're pulling loose from the side. So I'm gonna have to deal with that, reattach that. The kick panel under here has come out and it's actually uh, being pressure washed as we speak. So that's gonna have to go back in and be reattached. The seat folds up and the underside of it is just rotten so I'm probably gonna take all of that out and redo all of that eventually maybe not right now but eventually and then behind the seat here is another piece of wood that comes up and it's supposed to have a seat back on it that's made just like these cut uh, these seats with the same colors but it's missing some cushions that came with the boat but no back so I'm going to replace that backrest back here and uh, and then I'll try to get some white vinyl or something and cover that make it look like the rest of the boat let's get the scrubbing That's gonna do it for this one guys. We got her cleaned up. Next we gotta get her running, get the seats all back in it, and we'll be ready to hit the water. Thanks for watching the Project DIY channel. Make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss any of the boat build series. See you guys.